Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And the last part of Apple's laptop lineup has finally been fixed. Sort of. Let me explain. First off, for this review, I am reviewing the higher-end Intel quad-core 10th generation MacBook Pro, which retails for $1,799. Now, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is one of those spec bump updates that seem pretty unimpressive at first glance. I mean, the design here remains largely unchanged from the 2016 model. That was four years ago. Well, except for the small change that this MacBook Pro is slightly heavier and slightly thicker now weighing 3.1 pounds versus 3 pounds on the older model, and it's now at 15.6 millimeters for the thickness. Now rest assured all you die-hard 13-inch MacBook Pro fans who have told me that you don't want a heavier or thicker laptop, that increase is so minor that you won't even notice the difference. In fact, you probably wouldn't have even noticed that this was changed unless you watch this video which you are watching this video, so thank you for that. Now, unlike its bigger brother, the 16-inch MacBook Pro, this added weight and thickness isn't to accompany a new thermal design or increase the size of the battery. The added weight and thickness is to accompany the only real design change with this model, the addition of a new Magic Keyboard. The 13-inch MacBook Pro is the last Apple laptop to receive this upgrade. And as we covered in my initial video, this is the end of the butterfly keyboard era. Now this might be the final time I get to say this in a video, but the differences between the 2019 butterfly keyboard and this new 2020 Magic Keyboard on the 2020 model is an increased one millimeter of travel, a physical escape key, an inverted T arrow layout for the arrow keys, and the change from the butterfly mechanism to the traditional scissor switch mechanisms. So all of those issues that the butterfly keyboard could experience, like repeated key presses or physical keys actually getting stuck, look to be an issue that will be regulated to the trash bin of history. Now, every single laptop that Apple sells now contains the Magic Keyboard, all the way down from the 13-inch MacBook Air to the 13-inch MacBook Pro to the biggest 16-inch MacBook Pro. Typing experience feels the same as all of the other models too, offering increased stability and tactileness compared to the 2015 models. But at the same time, having more travel than the butterfly keyboard, this combination truly does make for the best of both worlds, and I think that Apple's approach when deciding this keyboard overall was really nice. It's an excellent keyboard and I really enjoy typing on it. The touch bar is also still here, providing sometimes useful context tools and sliders for things like volumes and brightness, but it still lacks real innovation and hasn't been updated since it was shown off four years ago. I always thought revisions to the touch bar might include the addition of haptic feedback to make it feel like you're clicking an actual physical button. Other than that, the outside remains the same, with the same four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports on the higher-end $1,799 model. Although these ports are powerful enough to connect things like external GPUs and 5K displays, or even Apple's new Pro Display XDR, which has a 6K resolution, I think the average user might miss ports like USB-A, HDMI, and of course, an SD card slot. However, those issues can actually be pretty easily remedied. Now, while Anchor isn't sponsoring this video, they did send me over a nice USB-C hub to check out that works on the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. It attaches directly to the side of the laptop using the two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports and gives you one full Thunderbolt port, one USB-C port, two USB-A ports, an SD card slot, and a micro SD card slot, and an HDMI port. So even after four years since Apple introduced this MacBook Pro, we are still not at the future where everything is plugged in via USB-C, so you might actually need an adapter like this. And if you wanna purchase this exact Anchor adapter, I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. Unfortunately, there are still some other things that haven't changed from previous models, with one of them being the display and the bezels around it. The 13-inch MacBook Pro did not receive the same treatment as its bigger brother. The 15.4-inch MacBook Pro, when it was updated, shrunk its bezels, fitting in a bigger 16-inch display. The display itself is still good. It has a resolution of 2,560 by 1,600, which results in 227 pixels per inch. The display still goes up to 500 nits of brightness and it still has the P3 wide color spectrum, which allows you to view more of the color spectrum, which is useful for photo and video editing during color correction. 
something the lower end MacBook Air does not have. Now, while there's nothing wrong with the display and I quite like the look of the MacBook display, I can only think of the rumors that the next MacBook Pros will have a new mini LED display, which should result in increased contrast, increased brightness, and probably the ability to view and edit HDR video. Speakers also receive a small update for wider stereo sound. It's a small improvement over previous models that makes the music sound fuller and less hollow, especially at higher volumes. Yeah, for my broken heart, no remedy, but maybe if you stay, we can get away with However, it still pales in comparison to the amazing speakers on the bigger 16-inch MacBook Pro, which still remain the best laptop speakers that I have ever heard. The 13-inch also gets a new three microphone array. It doesn't sound bad, but it still lacks the richer quality of the 16-inch MacBook Pro's studio quality microphone. This is a test recording of the 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro with its three microphone array. Now, if this video is sounding very similar to some of my previous reviews as of lately, uh, that's because it kind of is. Apple has been releasing a lot of products recently that only focus on minor spec bumps rather than design improvements. Products like the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro received very similar treatment to this new 13 inch MacBook Pro. There's nothing really too radical about these updates, unless you count the keyboard. I guess a good working keyboard might be considered radical, but overall, these are very, very minor updates. However, to be fair to this 13 inch MacBook Pro, there are a couple of inside upgrades to this laptop that make it a much better value now. For one, storage now starts at 512 gigabytes compared to the 256 gigabytes on the last model. RAM is also faster on the higher end, switching over to the 3733 megahertz LPDDR4X RAM. And it's also been doubled as well, from starting at eight gigabytes to now 16 gigabytes. Just by doing this, the 13 inch base level offers a much better value than any of the previous four port MacBook Pros. They are also accompanied by new 10th generation quad core Intel CPUs with a base clock speed of two gigahertz and new Intel Iris graphics. This combination of CPU power and enhanced graphics power makes for a nice upgrade that makes this smaller 13 inch option compelling for users who want a smaller and more portable Mac OS laptop with as much power as possible. If we run some benchmarks like Geekbench 5, we can see nice boosts, especially in single core performance, making this actually the highest performing single core Mac laptop that I have ever tested. That's on par with my 27 inch core i9 iMac. Multi-core performance is good, but definitely not as impressive as the single core score, and it nets a score of 4,467. The benchmark is just a benchmark though, and doesn't give us a glimpse into actual real world performance. So I did my basic 10 minute 4K video export test to ProRes to see how fast it can export. Running this export, this 13 inch MacBook Pro finished in eight minutes and six seconds. However, it's not the biggest boost in performance. Take for example, this 4K Final Cut Pro 10 export we did between every single MacBook available in the lineup right now in my previous video. The 16 inch MacBook Pro was almost twice as fast, finishing in at four minutes and 32 seconds. I would also note the entry level $1,299 version of the MacBook Pro, which finished this export at eight minutes and 48 seconds. If you notice, the differences between the base 13 inch MacBook Pro with its eighth generation Intel quad core CPU and the new 10th generation CPU only resulted in a 42 second real world difference in these export times. Granted, using an export time isn't exactly the best way to measure every aspect of performance on the MacBook Pro, but it just goes to show you that this base level MacBook Pro is still capable of giving you pretty respectable performance. So it's something you might wanna consider before you spend extra money on the $1,799 version of the MacBook Pro. Overall, editing on the 13 inch MacBook Pro was a pretty smooth experience. And that's partly also thanks to the new graphics, which the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro does not have. 
I was able to test the graphics out extensively and I go over it in more depth in this dedicated video I made about it, but overall for a laptop without a dedicated graphics card, the 13 inch MacBook Pro's new Iris graphics were pretty decent and I was able to play a majority of games by using Windows Boot Camp. Most of these games were playable in medium to low settings, although some older and less demanding titles could even be pushed up to high settings with stable frame rates. Now, while I wouldn't recommend buying a $1,799 MacBook Pro for gaming, it's capable just as long as you turn down those settings. In combination with the new CPU and integrated graphics, it makes a nice overall laptop for higher end workflows like video editing, photo editing, music production, and more. And while I really did like the performance on this laptop, I was still kind of left disappointed though, because I was hoping that the next revision of the 13 inch MacBook Pro would include the option for dedicated graphics cards. This would help the laptop be an even better choice for people that need powerful graphics, but also want a more portable option. More powerful graphics could help out with speedier render times, connecting to multiple 5K displays, or even better game performance. On top of that, there's still some other issues that Apple has yet to solve with this 13 inch MacBook Pro design. Much like the previous 13 inch models I reviewed, this MacBook Pro is prone to getting very hot, which is a problem only exacerbated now that we are in the warmer summer months. There was a point while testing this MacBook Pro over the past month where I was doing a FaceTime video call while browsing the web at the same time and the bottom of the machine became so hot on my lap that I had to take it off. It was actually starting to hurt me. It's a mystery why Apple hasn't decided to treat the 13 inch refresh with the same priorities they gave the 16 inch MacBook Pro by increasing airflow to result in better thermal performance. There's also still other problems like video quality from the FaceTime camera. It's nothing to write home about and all Mac laptops could use a boost in video quality. Battery life was also disappointing. Again, the 16 inch MacBook Pro received a nice battery boost with its update. However, the 13 inch receives none and even with the more power efficient 10th generation Intel CPUs, I still had what I would call mediocre battery life at best. Using the 13 inch MacBook Pro with mixed usage, I was getting only around five to six hours of battery life. However, even with all these flaws, the 13 inch MacBook Pro isn't a bad laptop. It's still a way better value than the previous four port eighth generation version and should be a fast enough Mac laptop for multiple types of professionals. So do I recommend the 13 inch MacBook Pro? Yes, but it's not a strong recommendation. Uh, I only recommend it to people who really need to upgrade or for people who just really couldn't stand the butterfly keyboard and they already like what they have with their 13 inch MacBook Pro. But my ultimate advice would be if your laptop is still working fine, I would really try and wait for the next upgrade. I think that's going to be more substantial and I feel and, and I hope that that upgrade is going to address a lot of the complaints that I had with this model, and I would expect it to get very similar treatment from the 15 inch that got upgraded to the 16 inch. So smaller bezels, uh, better battery life, better heat management, and maybe, just maybe an option for dedicated graphics. But anyway, that's what I think about the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, if you wanna help the channel out in any way, like maybe buying that 13 inch MacBook Pro, I will leave an affiliate link in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.